Last time on Races to Places, Lyndon went deep underground and took a shower on the road. Time for some technical info. Before Lyndon set off into the mountains of Tajikistan, some adjustments had to be made to his bike. Basil needed a rejet of his carburettor for the forthcoming high altitudes. Let us explain. As Basil and Lyndon climb up into the high mountains, air pressure will drop, leaving less oxygen for Basil's engine to burn than he is used to at sea level, where his carburettor is far more at home. Here we get to watch as Lyndon shows us his pre-mountain departure procedure to change the carburettor jets to ones with smaller holes, providing the correct air fuel mix for the increased altitude. Here we have two idle air mixture screws. The bronze one is the old one, not easily adjustable on the bike. The silver one is the new one which I'm putting on, which I can adjust by just stopping and reaching down. I mean to do this before I set off, but never got around to it, so I'm doing it now. Just remove the jets, make sure the jets are clean. If Lyndon had left the fueling jets in the carburettor unchanged, Basil's engine would run too rich due to the low levels of oxygen not allowing all the fuel to burn properly. Initially, this would have led to a phenomenon known as bogging, making the bike hard to ride, and ultimately it could lead to too much sooty deposit in the engine and stop it running altogether. So what I'm doing here is a problem with the bike at altitude. So, this is the reservoir for the pump jet, and this is the diaphragm. And basically, when you open the throttle here, it pushes this little rod outside here, which then activates the diaphragm, which pumps fuel up through the jet and into the engine. Basically, at altitude, it's pumping too much fuel, so what I'm going to do is use a valve shim, a valve shim beneath the, the diaphragm so it can't open as much, so it can't pump as much fuel in, which would hopefully make the bike more efficient as well. Looks like Lyndon's been lucky and found another homestay, so no need to unpack the tent tonight. Rather than go camp, I came into the town, asked around and found a homestay, so managed to shoe on the bike through the uh, metal doors here. Uh, basically a guy, local guy, offers people places to stay in his uh, place for $15 a night, with evening meal, hot shower and breakfast included. Can't go wrong with that, hey? And then, if we go down the steps, you can find a lovely little courtyard with uh, some rooms at the left hand side there and some showers and stuff. Very nice indeed, gonna cook dinner tonight for us, really excited. And an early start tomorrow with breakfast, bonus. This is my room for the night, very pleasant indeed as you can see. Carpet on the floor, no bed but you can just throw some like thin mattresses down there outside. It's perfect. And look at the view out the window. The river Punj blasting by. Right on the border of Afghanistan. Early the next morning, Lyndon heads out up the mountain road continuing his climb. Only on the road for a few miles, he finds himself at a roadblock where a truck has broken down. One of the truckers caught in the tailback has spotted a route past the jam, getting Lyndon back on his way. Ah, this one. Th this one, yeah? Not, not to come.
So I just came across a, a big roadblock on the road here. Um, this guy clearly wants to be in the movie, so we'll let him be in there. Um, basically, there's a big truck that has grounded out, and then trucks going the other way have like totally blocked the road. So I just passed it with my helmet camera on, so hopefully you could see how tight it was. I almost had to pull the bike through the gap. Further up the road, Lyndon comes across more locals wondering what's causing the traffic jam. So he gives them a special Races right, to hey. Places travel report. The road here is blocked. There. Down there is blocked. In the UK, traffic moves in a pretty reasonable order. Here, you've got to use balance and riding skill just to get around the vehicles. something is missing from the speed machine. And oh, there it is. When Lyndon filmed his Dakar promotion video a few years ago, he used an old digger to conduct the interview. So it's best to keep the trend going. Well, here we are sat on the border of Tajikistan and Afghanistan. And what you see behind me here, on the right, on my right, is the River Panj. And the River Panj is basically the borderline between the two countries. So, I'm sitting on, in Tajikistan here, in my bulldozer. And on the other side of the river, that's Afghanistan. Freaking awesome! <laughs> Alright Mikey, that should do for now. Cool place. I think I'm just gonna chow down for a minute, get some food. Nutella. It's more like melted chocolate to be honest. But if it makes the stale bread taste a bit better, I'm all I'm all in. approaches the summit of the first pass, large birds of prey are circling above him. I hope they're not too hungry. It's amazing, this is huge, They're eagles flying over me. in the last episode, the water crossings would get deeper. Sometimes, things just don't go according to plan. This bridge has definitely seen better days. So there's only one thing for it. Feeling this one will make the last look like child's play. As you can see, Lyndon used great technique and has made the crossing safe and sound. The Adventure Spec Magadan panniers Lyndon uses are fully waterproof. Crossing the river in the wrong way and dropping a loaded bike into a river like this is going to leave everything outside your bags wetter than an otter's pocket. Mm. 
next time on Races to Places, Lyndon finds new places to mount his GoPro, and the scenery in the mountains get bigger than Jody Marsh's. Mikey, are we supposed to say this? Brought to you with the Golden Tire 201, the ultimate 50-50 adventure tire. To see more of Lyndon's thoughts on the 201, click on the link in the description below.